Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Tom's Computer Channel. In this episode we take a look of one of the most successful game consoles of the 90s. In this case it is the Sony PlayStation. One of these I had back in the day and I played lots and lots of hours with this console and have a lot of fun. It was a great time for me, it was the time between uh, the Amiga and the PC. In, in this episode we show, I show you this first version of the PlayStation, but uh, later more. So enjoy this video and let's get started. So here we are. First a little to the history of the PlayStation. The PlayStation was sold from 1994 in Japan and the end of selling was uh, 2006. And the PlayStation was one of the most popular games uh, consoles in the 90s and early 2000s. And uh, after the start of the PlayStation 2 the PlayStation was renamed in PS1 and get um, in another uh, design. And um, one of the factor of success is uh, the, in the, the PlayStation uses CDs for the games. They were cheaper than the cartridges of the C64 and have a lot more space so you can make better games. Um, and uh, with the mod chip you can put in, you can play um, games of other region, regions. The PlayStation was uh, branded for one region and you could only play games of this region. If you had the mod chip you can uh, with the European PlayStation, these two are European PlayStation, you can uh, get, play North American and Japanese games. So one effect of the mod chip is you can uh, also play um, copied games. This was uh, a good thing in the 90s. And you can also play audio CDs in this one. In this one, this is uh, the latest version of uh, this design. You can um, you have a, a, a little light show on the on screen if you play audio CDs, video CDs or DVDs. You cannot play with these PlayStation. So a little thing to uh, the machine itself. In this PlayStation, a uh, 32 bit RISC processor with 2 megabytes of RAM and uh, 1 megabyte GPU is inside and in, uh, in, in the PAL version you have 512 to 384 pixel resolution and in NTSC you can have a resolution max of six, 640 to 480 pixels. We have two controller sockets in the front you can see here, here the two controller sockets, the two um, memory card sockets. And on the back you have uh, an AV multi, multi out. For this you need a special cable. It's this here with a proprietary plug from Sony. Then the earlier version, this is an earlier version. It's not the earliest version of this. This is the second, second revision of this. You have um, 
composite out. This had not a um, composite out anymore. The earliest version has here composite and uh, audio out on RCA jacks. And this one has also a serial. This boat has serial out and you have a parallel output I.O. This one don't have this. It's uh, the latest version of this design and they don't have this. So, and equipment. What can you plug in? First, a control pad. This is the, con is the early control pad. It's uh, only with, uh, with buttons. You have here is the direction buttons, select and start, and the four um, buttons with uh, Sony signs, and you have four shoulder buttons. In the later version, sold with this one, I sold this controller. This one with uh, analog sticks. And uh, this version came 1997, April, and have these analog joysticks. The uh, version from November 1997, from this one, has a vibration motor in this, and it's called DualShock controllers. Um, from the two motors you have um, a feedback from the games and this uh, um, this is for a more impressive game feeling with feedback when you drive a car and and the street is not so good or you're bouncing and everything you have a feedback from the controller and this controller is also played with the pl uh, also sold with the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 3. This one is the PlayStation 3 controller. And you see the wire, the PlayStation 3 has this DualShock controller wireless. If you want save your scores and levels and so, you need this one or this one. These are memory cards and to use a memory card you remember we have memory card slot here you can put the memory cards in here and then you can save your games and for the PlayStation 1 you have sold um, a lot of other equipments like mice and other joysticks and adapters and mod chips you can put in for uh, several things. So that's it for that. Now we make a test and then we open up and take a look inside. Well, we, back. we have uh, connected this PlayStation, the earlier one. With the TV, you can see here uh, some of my games. So, and uh, with the older controller, let's test this one. We take a rally game. So, it's working. You see. You hear? But this uh, CD drive makes a little bit noise from spinning. I think it needs a little bit clean. I don't know if you hear it through the camera, but uh, I think this needs a clean. the controller works
So, let's test the other console. If you see here, we have some issues with the eject button. But if we clean this and lubricate a little bit, then it gets better. See, this works too. This is the version I had back in the day with some of these controllers in this color This one needs a good clean too. This makes all the noises while spinning. So this works too. You see? And now Let's open up, take a look inside and give them a good clean. So let's open up and see what's inside. Oh, first clip, it's empty. You see the mechanism to open, power button, reset button, the mechanics for the for the case. Here we have the power supply and the laser. It's connected with some small connectors and a ribbon cable. Put the laser to the side. We have the connection to the power supply. Take the controller ports out. Carefully, a little bit of dust. For the power supply, I use an insulated screwdriver. At mains voltage, you have to be careful.
take the PCB out. If you see, this PCB has a mod chip. You can see no corrosion. No corrosion, all is fine. A little bit cleaning with some alcohol and ready to go. Shield is also good. Oh, you can put it in the, off the side, and now we have the PlayStation apart. Upper case. We have to disassemble and then we can clean the case. Now the case is apart, so the next step is clean the case. Well, the first thing to remove is the sticker. Use some IPA. You see, easy, easy going. Then we take a paper towel and wipe over the rest. And now we wipe this little bit up with a with a cleaner, with a universal cleaner. And if you see, the lower case is. Good to go. A little bit inside. Only dust. damages or anything else normal dust so lower case is clean
So this thing we put on the side. All is clean, no yellowing, looks good. And there's three on the side. For this dirt, some people tried um, WD40. I will try this too. So this we let sit for a while and soak. Now let's try if this goes. Paper towel, wipe over, and it's not that result. IPA works much, much, much better than this. And if I see here, this is on this side, a damage in the surface. This you cannot clean away. Inside normal cleaner. Now we put it on the side. The board is a little bit dusty, so we can clean this with a little bit of IPA paper towel and the brush As you can see, a little bit dirt from the factory. The underside is clean.
Now the board is clean too. And it's time for reassemble. So all parts are clean and dry. The small parts I clean with some soapy water uh, out of camera. So uh, you know how this works. Let's reassemble. The first I think is we put the buttons in place. Look what you do when you do it, and it works better. So the top part is reassembled, put it on the side, and now we make the buttons. First part is this one. plate in, the PCB in, some of these and there's no before we need this ah. too early Here and here. There. Wipe it 
хорошо. Достой. Now you have to be careful. Like this. Now put the cable in this connector. Yeah. Little bit of contact cleaner. This too. Now power supply. <sighs> Caps are all looking good, so we don't change them. If you want to, you can do this. We take a look of these. The laser head makes some noises before, so we can loosen this. The screws too big. Open this. Carefully and you see all lubrication. There, they are all lubrication. So we take a cotton swab. Some IPA. Cleaning this old lubrication best if you can.
And then we put some new lubrication. New silicon grease. So, and uh, now put the plate back. Carefully, this goes in. Lift it a little bit from the surface that you don't crush the lens. Now we clean carefully the lens. And then we are ready for this. Carefully. And on the motor we make a little bit of contact cleaner, way too much. Wipe down the mess. And now, ready with this. Put this on the side. this back and build it in so we put the things There. There. And this one. So that's it. Put the case back in place. And now we are ready to test. All is connected again. And now 
Let's see if this works. First we have to change it on side AV. Let's look. Start. And you see, it works. Here we are. That's the end of this episode. We have cleaned the PlayStation and we've lubricated and cleaned the CD laser. If uh, you want to see me the other PlayStation clean, on camera please let me know in the comments the cleaning of the other uh, PlayStation one is similar to this I have showed you so if you want to see this let me know I hope you enjoyed this episode if you do so um, like this video if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe if you want more videos and hit the bell icon if you want um, to miss one new episode. So, that's it for now and I see you in the next video. Bye!